Today, we're going to show you how to limit characters on an input. For example, when you need the user to input a code. And as you can see, we have a special warning class and an error message to tell them what's wrong. So let's get started. I will kick off with my HTML. And for this, I need only three things, a label, an input, and a paragraph. And I will give the input an ID of input. The type will be text. This will depend on whether your codes could have text or only numbers. I'm going to do it so you can have either. And then I'm going to tie the label to the input with the for attribute. I then give the user some information about what the input is for between the label tags. So we'll say enter secret code. Now, when the user enters a code that's too long, they're going to see an error message below the input, which is this paragraph. And the error message is going to say, max code length is five characters. Grimacing emoji. But of course, we only want this to show when they have made that mistake. So for now, we'll put in the hidden attribute. So that won't show on page load. And I'm also going to give this an ID of error warning, which will enable me to use it in the JS. So the first thing we'll do in our JS is grab our input and our error warnings from the DOM. So const input equals document dot get element by ID input, copy that down. And then our paragraph was called error warning. So now those two are accessible via our JS. Now what I want to happen is when the user inputs anything into the input, the JS will check to see whether the code is still within the allowed length. And to do that, we do input dot add event listener, we use the input event listener, and that's going to run a function called check code length. So that's currently complaining because check code length is not yet defined. So I will do that now. Function check code length. Now to do this, I'm going to first save a variable called entered code length. And this is going to be set to the length of the value currently in the input. And that looks like input.value.length. And just to show you what that looks like, open up my console and you will see it is indeed showing how long my code is. So now I'm going to save a second variable called max length. And for now, I will set that to five. Now we'll use a conditional to show the warning and add the red styling if the entered code is too long. And that looks like if entered code length is equal to max length, then what we want to do is set the hidden attribute on the error warning to false. And then on the input, I'm going to add a CSS class called error. And I wrote this class earlier. It is a background color of this nice light red and a solid dark red outline on the focus. So let's give that a go. One, two, three, four, five. So that kind of works, but there are a few problems with it, which I will now fix up. So the first problem is that if the user then deletes some characters, the error message and styling doesn't go away, but we can fix that in our else clause. And that looks like error warning dot hidden equals true. And then removing the error CSS class on the input with error.classless.remove. So now try this. It's added, but then when we delete, it's gone again. Good news. Now you may have noticed that this is jumping around slightly when our error message is shown. And to fix that, what we can do is increase the minimum height of our container. So you'll now see no more jumping. Another issue we have is that although we want to set our max length to five, the user is currently able to add any number of characters into the input, which is a bit silly and preventable with the max length attribute. Now you may be thinking, well, why don't you just use the max length attribute and just have done with it then? Well, the thing is, if you only had the max length attribute, you're not going to be showing the error message or adding the styling. So that's why it's important to use our JS as well. But now we've done that, we've got a situation that could lead to bugs. And that is, we have got our max length set here, but then it is set separately 
in the JS. So if someone, for example, my future self, comes along and changes the max length to, let's say, three, we might think we've changed it in the HTML, but the JS is still looking for five, which it can never reach, and therefore it can never show the error messages. But that's easy to fix. We simply swap out our hard-coded number for input.maxlength. So now this shows at three. And actually, we should also update our paragraph. And to do that, we do error warning dot text content equals, and then we just need to copy this into a string interpolation and switch this out for max length. So you will now see this is displaying three. And if I change this back to five, one, two, three, four, five, woohoo. Now the eager eyed among you will have noticed that there is one final quite serious flaw in my character limitation. And that is that the error class and the message appear on the fifth character, which is actually wrong because five characters is the allowed length. So we actually want the error indications to show on the sixth character, but we can't do that because the user can only enter five in the HTML. Now, one way around this would be just to change the max length to six. So then have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then it's showing the error indications only when the code has become too long and not when it's the right length. But this isn't great because it's not semantically correct and it's also not going to work with our dynamic error message. But I have another solution. Over in our JS, what we can do is use input set attribute to change the max length to current max length plus one. So you'll now see that the user is able to add the five characters, but when you add six, that's when the error message appears. And then what we can do is remove it again in our string interpolation. So now one, two, three, four, five is A-OK. -okay. When we enter number six, the error indications show up, but the error message shows the correct number of characters. And the final thing I'm going to do is remove the last typed character. And to do this, we do input dot value equals input dot value dot slice and then naught to minus one. So now you'll see one, two, three, four, five is okay. I'm now hitting six and the error indications are shown, but the too long code isn't reflected in the input. And just to prove to you that this works, I can now remove it and our error indications are gone again. Woo! Oh no, that woo is too long. We could do a woo with three O's, but not four. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any suggestions for future videos or improvements I could make to this code, I would love to hear them. And please consider hitting one of the buttons below, preferably like and or subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.